So today's video, I'm going to be showing a quick example of uh, Revit project, which is the 3D design software we use for MEP engineering. This is kind of an interesting one. This is a historic reservation um, preservation project. It's a landmark project here in Denver. So we have to preserve the building envelope, the exterior. You can't really alter that. So a lot of our ducts and systems need to come up through the roof. This one uh, took a lot of coordination to get the buy-in from the client on how we're gonna distribute the ducting through the space. And um, what I ended up doing to simplify the process, a lot of the times you'll go through what's called a uh, design development set. It's the DD set, about a 60% completion. And what you're trying to do is get the client to buy in on the, the main idea, you know, what type of equipment we're gonna use, where we're gonna run the ducts. I ended up coordinating this one in uh, PDF and marking it up in red because I wanted to show them how I'm going to distribute the ductwork. We're going to do underfloor air distribution on all three levels, which is going to provide great heating performance, but here the cooling season is not as critical, so they decided uh, they would prefer the uh, in-floor supply heat. So we're going to do a heating only system in the basement, which they've excavated down an additional three feet. This was a former crack house in the city. So we, we're doing a lot of upgrades, trying to get this uh, up to code, basically. A lot of creepy stuff in there, um, a lot of drug use, and a lot of homeless people around the, the parks in this area, heroin. Um, the first day I went to visit this project um, on site to get photographs, there was... See, it's a nice um, brick building, 1860, I believe, 1880s. Um, it's, basically right after the Civil War. This is in a historic district. But you can see it's pretty beat up. Um, there was some concertina wire on the porch. Um, all the gates are locked. We they, we they had drug addicts breaking in on a routine basis. So what we gotta do, we're gonna go in, we're gonna add concealed ductwork. We're actually gonna do underfloor supply down here in the basement. And we're, um, there you go, There's they've dug out the basement another three feet. Uh, so, and we're going to run our ductwork down there as they fill the slab back in. We're going to provide an industrial look with spiral exposed ductwork down there for the basement tenant. The upper two levels. The upper two levels are going to be uh, the next tenant who's going to utilize the, the nice 10, 12 foot ceilings that they've got. Um, nice historic finishes. We're going to preserve some of the fireplaces. Nice uh, stone wall. Not much insulation value, but we're going to have to insulate from the outside existing water meters. What we're going to do, we're going to run our spiral exposed duct down there in the basement um, for an industrial look for the basement tenant. They're going to add a new detached garage here. Gar garage unit heaters, condensing units on grade, all, all of it. Here's the interior finish, about 12 foot stork wood trim. We got a fireplace existing. There's the, uh, the park and you can you might be able to make out some of the drug addicts hanging out next door. Not the nicest area, but we're trying to bring this back, bring it back to life, you know. There's a lot of money invested here in the real estate, so we want to preserve it for what it was. Uh, creepy stuff in the attic. That's one of the fun things about the job. You get, to go, you get to go into all these areas and explore buildings, and it feels like you know the ins and outs of buildings, which is maybe a personal interest of mine. I like exploring buildings. As a kid, I would always go to construction sites and just mess around, look at how the buildings were being put up, and. Uh, you know, during the framing and then after they put the roof on, you know, I'd go back in and explore around, crawl around in the rafters. But yeah, uh, some of the satisfaction you get from this type of work, you know, you're helping build a city. This is actually near my neighborhood. Um, so I feel like this is, I'm helping to build my local community as an engineer. It's quite, um, it's fulfilling in that sense. It's not a glamorous career, but <laughs> you, over time, I've often said, you know, I'm helping to build a city, which is cool. Um, it's kind of the big picture. <clears throat> I'm going to show you here in 3D what we got going on. Got a little uh, 3D section view. This one's a little hard to discern. You can see the gray is our current underfloor ductwork. This is on the main level. Uh, let me spin this around so you can see it. I need to get a stand to hold this damn camera out. Just modified my coffee mug and balanced the camera on it. But here's the 3D view. This is what we got going on here. We're gonna do a four ton cooling system to serve the upper level, which is gonna supply up here. And then we're gonna provide underfloor distribution. We're gonna have to carve out a new soffit that's gonna be concealed. 
um, minimum nine inch drop. We don't want to alter this historic looking ceiling. We're going to tap off the top with eight inch rounds, distribute between the joists, and then punch up through the floor for the upper, the underfloor distribution. Uh, main level, I've sized that for a three ton cooling and heating system. Um, we're going to supply it again through spiral exposed duct, which will be visible from the basement tenant. He wanted the industrial finish. So that's what they're going to get. We're going to run the eight inch taps between the joists, pop up through the floor. This is going to be a fire rated partition. So we're going to need to damper each one of these grills coming up through the floor. That's per fire code. This project is under the 2018 International Building Code Compliance. So that falls under the jurisdiction of the 2018 series of the International Fire Code, Mechanical Code, Energy Code, which are getting more strict every year. Energy performance and efficiency is pretty important. We're gonna achieve our ventilation through the house by using two-speed exhaust fans, which I've yet to model. They're gonna be in the ceilings of each restroom. They're gonna be in each restroom and what happens, how you achieve ventilation is by, it always runs at a low speed, therefore pulling air, fresh air into the space through cracks in the building known as infiltration. These, the, the air comes through the window gaps and the door gaps primarily, or if you have a leaky envelope, building envelope, the fresh air will flow in if there's any negative pressure in the space. Luckily here in Denver, we're in a dry climate, so negative pressure isn't too big of an issue where you bring in moisture into the envelope. That could, most likely you always want to pressurize the house. A lot of the residential projects we do, we do two-speed exhaust fans. So the low speed brings in fresh air, you turn the fan on, that pumps out the exhaust from the restrooms. We're also going to have ducted kitchen hoods on each tenant, the basement tenant, eight inch ducted exhaust to the roof, main level eight inch ducted exhaust to the roof. And as we're approaching heating season here, um, I like to mess around with this uh, thermometer. So what I can do, I can take the temperature of the surfaces. Uh, yesterday in the home office, it got up to 80 degrees. I've got a two ton system on my house. It's a little brick house, but um, it's interesting to watch the temperature on the walls. This really has nothing to do with the video, but I, you know, you want to design like an engineer, you got to think like an engineer. You got to, you know, get the tangibles you know, measurements. You want to see what are the temperatures? What the hell is going on? Why are we designing these systems? Basically to keep people comfortable and not lose their minds, which sounds like the case right now in this video for myself.